Hey everyone, it's me, Fiona Jane, aka Dr. Hikaru. Yesterday I did a video and I'm saying I wasn't feeling too hot. Well, I went to the doctor first thing this morning after just kind of crashing yesterday and sleeping and taking a whole bunch of meds and I have the flu. So, yay. So no makeup, no nothing. Um, I'm hoping just to do a quick video because I said I wanted to talk about the things you don't see. So you're already miserable when you have the flu. You get the body aches, you get you kind of get you're running a fever, you get the hot cold flashes, you get a sinus that's just dripping everywhere and I've gone through how many boxes of tissue, my throat hurts, etc, etc. You all understand what the flu is. What you don't understand is how the flu makes those of us with endometriosis so much more miserable, so bad that we just want to die. And you're kind of wondering why. Let's go over endometriosis again on a high level. Um, endometriosis deals with a couple things. You can look up all the information, watch my other vlogs. I don't want to keep having to define endometriosis, but one of the treatments they give us is birth control because they're trying to regulate the amount of estrogen that our body builds because endometriosis is linked to the cells lining your uterus. So... A lot of times they will try to, if you're more advanced or if you had severe pain, they're going to try to get you to skip your period so that those cells don't have the ability to um, regenerate and try to exit your body. And because endometriosis is they don't exit your body successfully the way most girls experience period, they decide to either flow back up to the up through the fallopian tubes and back to the ovary or somehow find a way to end up in other areas. When I had my surgery... In November, we had found it was in between my uterus and my colon. So, um, that's an example of, of why endometriosis sucks. So, when I sit a hormone imbalance, they treat, you know, in the estrogen, they treat you with birth control. I was originally on orthotricycline. Um, when we first, when I started experiencing my pains, we moved me to orthocycline um, so that I would always have a regular dosage. And after my lap my surgery in november my doctor recommended i go on seasonic because she also found i had pmdd which was making me feel like a psychotic woman with mood swings before and during my period so seasonic is a three-month birth control i mentioned in my video before the last one i was spotting and i was super stressed and the pain was coming back with a vengeance and um it actually had calmed down this last week so i'm really bummed the spotting kind of died down too but here comes the fun part. Birth control. Antibiotics. I'm sure you've already heard this. They don't mix. They cancel out my birth control. So I'm on um, these two lovely things for the flu. And they're going to interfere with this. And this is pivotal in controlling my pains. Along with these two medications, Tramadol, which I can take up to twice a day when I'm having severe pains, and I still have leftover Percocet, which I can also use, and then Amitriptylin, which is something that she just prescribed me lately that I take at night. I'm about to either have a pill to a pill every night to also help combat the pain and deal with some of the nausea and um, the moodiness I can get in the morning, because I'm only on my first pack of this. Um, we really won't see true results until I'm on my second pack because my body is trying to regulate to this birth control. My body doesn't want to skip periods, so when I try skipping it, I'm usually in a lot of pain, and it really hurts, and it really sucks, and it's not a happy place to be, as I said in my last um, video when I had hit the end of month two, and we're normally having a period here, and I've been spotting that week, and then... This week I was spotting, and then finally this week I'm not. But thanks to being on these two things, I am probably going to have a nice battle again with my body, where my period could possibly come before it's supposed to. And I can also experience heavy flow on my period. I said before I was light spotting, and I was passing small clots, which alarmed me. And they said, that's kind of typical because my body's getting used to it. So now we are throwing this fun thing in the mix. Which I kind of want to cry, because it's not fair. Um, the other thing is, when you are dealing with so many things going through your system, 
women with endometriosis are prone to yeast infections. It's nasty, it's sick. You're like, whatever. The average girl is lucky to have no yeast infections, and maybe once or twice, depending on severe stress or severe changes in her body chemistry. If you have more than four, it's considered truly, truly, uh, for a year, truly unlikely. Last year, I was averaging about six, seven. Um, being on all this much medication here, I'm probably going to have to go on it again. And I won't be able to start it until I'm done with the antibiotics because it will just conflict with the antibiotics. So now I have one week of being on antibiotics, followed probably by, by another week of being on a yeast infection crease, um, treatment in which I'm going to feel super ugly. I'm going to have strange stuff coming out of me that's not supposed to. And I'm going to be probably super irritated and moody because my body now doesn't have the hormones needed to regulate. And I'm also probably because my period's going to start or my body's tricking to start be dealing with PMDD. So we have to really think about our health. And, you know, it doesn't end when the flu is done. I mean, endo always goes. Um, so I get to battle this for maybe three weeks just because I have to float. Um, assuming that the flu medicine takes only five days to seven days to work because my immune system, as you know, is already shot to hell with endo. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my lovely endo and the flu and PMDD part one. I'll probably do a series, um, or maybe not. Hopefully I won't have to talk about this, but I said I wanted to share with you the good and the bad of endo. Um, again, there's not really good, but I wanted to show you the stuff you don't see because I'm always sick. Um, I had another announcement to make. Please join our event on Facebook, Endometriosis Awareness Month 2013, Wear Yellow. Um, we encourage you to wear yellow all throughout the month of May, uh, March. And if you can't, please at least wear yellow on the 1st of March. We'd love it if you could join and invite and share as many times as you can. Um, we need a cure for this. It's not fair. It affects 1 to 10 women. And we women really need it with a passion. So please join our event. Wear yellow. Yellow ribbons work. Anything yellow. You can wear a Batman shirt that has yellow. You can wear a Superman shirt that has yellow. I'm totally okay with this. I just advise that you wear yellow and support me and my endo sisters. Because this is a terrible, horrible disease, and we need all the support we can get. So, that's me. I'm going to pass out all of this. This is going to be super froggy. Um, thanks. Send me love, prayers, endo, um, spoons. This is called spoons. Because if you haven't already, go look up the invisible or the spoon theory. You, but you don't look sick.com. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening and tuning in. Bye.